The Democratic Republic of the Congo has had a tough journey towards the election with the economy suffering as a result. From 2001, political unrest, subdued business activity and economic slowdown hurt public finances. Government revenues dropped from 13.6% of GDP to 9.4% in the past few years, causing a decline in public expenditure. However, the country moved from 184 to 182 out of 190 countries in the World Bank's 2018 Doing Business report. The DRC ranks among the 10 worst in the world in the business climate. Will the country's economy improve post the election period? The, to help us unpack this is Advocate Sipo Mantula, who is a researcher at the University of South Africa. Good afternoon to you and welcome, uh, Advocate. Let's track back and look at how the economy was run before and was it efficient and competitive from 2001 up until this period? Afternoon, Brother Colin, and to the viewers. I don't think so, because as you were reading the stats there, if you look at the corruption levels in the DRC, it is ranked almost 161. Yes, there is growth that was there, but remember that the period when they left Sun City in 2001, it was a very critical moment that they had to go for the government of national unity, where you had uh, four uh, presidents, vice president, and one. Then if you look at the tax of those presidents by then, it was very high. You still had the issue around the education, uh, issues around the mining sector, where there was still an illicit uh, flow of those uh, mining concessions to Europe, as well as to other African countries. So one can say that during the uh, transition from the father of uh, uh, Joseph Kabila, Laurent Kabila, who was killed, coming to Kabila Jr., Nothing changed. Uh, rather, there was an issue of conflict in the east, but in the central of Congo, Kinshasa, it was only Kabila and his, uh, uh, one can say, his group and his family. As you know that last month when he was asked about the allegation of his family having benefited in the Kabila's presidency, he did deny. But one can say that evidence, it, it, it is coming out clear that Kabila's uh, era there was a lot of challenges in the education sector. He did not invest in education, meaning many young people did not have access to education. And we are talking about the primary school age children. And even the issue that I'm, uh, I'm raising of the natural resources, how he has led the natural resources to be exploited so by advocate, the foreign countries. Did you tell me something about how, when you were referring to conflict in the DRC, <laughs> the, the, the cost implications, especially with the, the wow. outside uh, uh, financing by the UN in, in, in the peace mission for so many years of conflict. <laughs> Dr. Colin, you know, the question of war is expensive. It is not all about the military equipment or paying the military their pediums and their pegs. It is around the financial and the psychological toll that it takes on a daily basis. We are talking about of 9 billion year of money. We are talking of almost 29% of the GDP, their gross domestic product that uh, was affected during that time. And the cost of the conflict in that area, it has been always being uh, estimated, it has been having actual and estimation, but it has been very high because it is not only the African peacekeepers, but it, it includes even the United Nations, as well as the civilians who are becoming victims of this conflict. Now, with the new government of uh, President-elect uh, Felix Tshisekedi, uh, are there prospects of the economy being put in the right place to be globally competitive? One can say that they're quite not promising because already Martin Fayula is already contesting elections. Tshisekedi uh, has been working closely with Vital Kamara. Vital Kamara was the former speaker of uh, parliament, and if one looks at his uh, passion, Tshisekedi, Tshisekedi comes from the uh, branding and communication history. He does not have any, any economic experience. So one can say that he will be assisted by the coalition, but as well as to root out corruption. I think one of the political prospects should be around the issue of uh, dealing with corruption in the mining sector to even deal with the agriculture. You know one thing that I'm calling about DRC is that it is 
it is fertile. When you're talking about food production of this continent, DRC stands as the one of the countries that can feed this continent. Even electricity, we have the power of energy. If we can focus on the Inga Dam, the Inga Dam that can electrify the whole continent. TT, you have the foreign countries that have been involved in the Inga Dam. South Africa had an opportunity. We don't know where did we lose that opportunity to deal with the Inga Dam and the electrification of Africa. Mm -hmm. So, given that the DRC is uh, one of the Francophone countries, what is the interest of foreign countries in that country looking at its former colonial masters, uh, the mm -hmm. West and Russia as well? One of the former colonial masters now, he's sitting with us as uh, South Africa in the non-permanent uh, security council. Belgium, Belgium has got an interest on the natural resource. The BRICS, two countries that are involved, the BRICS, I mean Russia and uh, China. Russia is very clear, it is around weapons, it is around ammunition. And when you look at China, China it is going into sugar chain, it is going to infrastructure, high infrastructure of roads. China it is going on ICT as well. And the Japanese, what I saw in Congo in 2011, their robots were uh, created and designed by the Japanese and Chinese. So if you look at the foreign countries, they have made sure that they go into what you call high-impact infrastructure development. They are not going for minor uh, business deals. They are going for high impact and this is russia as well as china and china it will date back to the early years because china and DRC have been having relationships so that's where you saw kabila he went to china in 2016 to deal with the issues around even ict to deal with issues around even the sports ground where the current stadium in drc was built by the chinese i don't think it is a strange common thing where the au building in addis ababa is being built by the chinese the mining sector is highly contentious, especially in the less exploited area like North Kivu. Is political uncertainty likely to subside so that there can be some economic activity in that area? Because I understand that there had been some blockage by rebels who have been saying that they want to have their own enclave and not allow even foreigners to, to come and do some excavation around those uh, mountainous areas. That is quite true, Colin. In fact, I was uh, deployed there in 2006 and not 2011. What I saw about the Kivus, I can tell you the uh, Kivus being the mining area, we are talking of Walikale, Ruchuru, Masisi. Those villages, Colin, you, one can say you might have another uh, separation of Congo, where you have another province of Congo uh, ruled by rebels. What is strange about that area, it is that there is no proper road infrastructure, and the rebels can rule as they want. Even Kabila, he, he, there was no chance for him to can occupy that area. Remember even when the Beni, uh, the three provinces that were denied to vote, it is in the, towards the North Kiwet Ituri region. So that area with the uh, activism of the irregular armed groups I will shy away from using the word militia or the or the rebels but to say irregular armed groups that are in that area are benefiting but what they are selling they are mining and diamonds that they are selling they are selling to Europe at a cheaper price and that's where the Kimberley process has to come in and people who are very knowledgeable is our former ambassador Welile Nkapo on the Kimberley process of the DRC that he can share light with us in the future about the Kimberley process and uh, if you think of Tesekedi, where he's coming from, Colin, quickly, Mbujumayi, it is another mining town that is very rich, but you still have rebels in that area too. All right. Thank you very much to advocate Sipo Mantula, who is a researcher with the University of Sarah.